I haven't met a kid who doesn't like potatoes. It's a universal crowd pleaser. Despite that, few are those who've witnessed it grow in today's urban world. I was one of those until recently. I would always put off growing potatoes due to their ubiquitous and expensive presence in any grocer's market. With limited garden space, growing potatoes seemed like a waste of precious ground. Yet curiosity got the best of me, and I had to try it. So I'm here to share with you simple ways of growing and not growing a potato. You can probably deduce the outcome of my experiment. I'm Siloe Oliveira, and I'm in a journey to learn more about food growing through success and failure in my suburban homestead. I've heard you should sprout or chit your potatoes, as the English would say, to help out potato growth. So I bought some spuds from a local organic market and lined them up on a sunny windowsill. I bought a red and a blue variety of small potatoes. They had several eyes in each tuber, which meant I could get more shoots out of each one. A few weeks later, they were sprouting, but it happened to be June already. I definitely had waited too long to plant potatoes. Potatoes can be started as early as frost stops visiting the garden. Sometimes you may have in your kitchen potatoes that are sprouting by themselves, even in dark spaces. You can use those to plant, since it is not recommended to eat sprouting potatoes. First, using a clean knife, I cut up the sprouted seed potatoes into pieces according to the number of sprouted eyes in each spud. This technique should give you more plants, since a new plant will effectively be grown from each piece. You want to divide the pieces in such a way as to leave one or two eyes per piece. I had read once in a gardening book that leaving the freshly cut pieces scab over in the sun for half an hour was important to prevent rotting. So I did this. As a newbie potato grower, I wanted to try out new things. I haven't since made my mind on whether cutting and letting potatoes scab over were indeed necessary or beneficial steps. I decided to plant them next to my hugel bed, which we had planted tomatoes on. Now, is pre-sprouting a necessary step? Some people swear by it, others think it unnecessary. This step worked well for me, I think. Potatoes need good, loose soil, so I grabbed my fork and started to loosen this newly uncovered bed. While you can grow more than one crop of potatoes a year, growing them in the heat of summer is not as easy as when cooler temperatures dominate. So first thing not to do when planting potatoes, don't plant potatoes in hot weather. This area I'm growing in is next to large trees. It is therefore shady and full of roots. That is not the best environment for potatoes. Mistake number two in growing potatoes, don't plant them in shady areas close to trees. In retrospect, I should have grown my experimental plot in a sunny area, but that is a scarce commodity in my garden. So shade it was. After loosening the soil, I grabbed my sunbathing tubers and dropped them into holes, about 2 to 3 inches deep. I spaced them out in the bed evenly, making sure each seed potato was a little less than a foot apart. There is a saying in Portuguese that you use to ward off busybodies that keep nagging you. You just say, vai plantar batata, which translates to, go plant potatoes. I don't know exactly why this is so but I think that planting potatoes is a rather therapeutic process. As you saw, I committed some mistakes in planting this batch. Let's just say my harvest was less than stellar. I'll share with you in an upcoming video in detail, but for now I would rather focus on what delicious things can be made with tubers. Here's a recipe for leek and potatoes too. It will take away the taste of failure from my mouth for now. In late summer when the potatoes were ready, I had leeks maturing into flavorful giants in my front yard. I went about harvesting a nice specimen to use as a main ingredient in this simple dish. This leek did not want to budge. That's a sign of a great root system. Even in loose soil, it was holding on to dear life.
The highly aromatic scent of leek was already perfuming the moist summer air. This mop of tendrils for roots was a sign of health and vigor, despite having to compete for water, sun, and nutrients in a crowded, mixed bed. If you have not tried to grow leeks yet, you must. It is like the highly sophisticated cousin of an onion and garlic, with less of the pungency. You will need a few potatoes. Wash them thoroughly under running water. Wash your leek well. It tends to have dirt in between its inner layers, so giving a thorough rinse is essential. Using a knife, cut out the roots. Cut the stalk from the leaves and peel away the leaves revealing the pockets in between the layers where the soil collects. Wash these thoroughly. Besides using the stem on this recipe, I'm also using the leaves, which people usually discard. While they're not as flavorful as the stalk, I feel like the younger leaves are good to eat. Cut your leek stalks into fine pieces. Do the same with the leaves. The finer you cut them, the better. If you prefer to have a more rustic texture to your stew with bigger pieces, that is also fine. Cut your potato into small cubes. Since I grew these myself and know they are chemical free, I am not peeling them. Into a large pot, add a few tablespoons of olive oil. Add some sprigs of thyme to the oil and let it infuse. Salt to taste. Drop the cut up leek into the pan and stir. A most amazing aroma will invade your kitchen and home. Don't be surprised if neighbors stop by. Add the potatoes and stir. I'm adding to the stew a small Indian pea that cooks fast. You can add fast cooking lentils instead. They would really complement the flavors on this one. 
about a cup or so would be good. Add enough water to cover the vegetables. Unlike a soup, a stew is chunkier and less watery. I decided to add a bit more of the peas, but you can add as much or as little as you see fit. Stir everything together. Add a bit of turmeric to brighten the flavor and color. Stir in a couple of tablespoons of tahini sauce and adjust the salt to your liking. This stew cooks fast, and it is a great quick summer meal. While it may not be the most photogenic food, I guarantee it tastes delicious. Join me next time for another garden adventure. Remember to send your questions and comments to seedofchoice at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Homestead. <laughs>